إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونؤمن به توكل عليه ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له أما بعد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغ أني ولو آية In our lives, a very important aspect of being Muslim in a predominantly non-Muslim land is that we should be involved in the work of Dawah. We should be involved in inviting people to the beautiful message of Islam. A message that penetrates the hearts, a message that brings peace, inner peace, that brings purpose to life, and most importantly, the only message that brings us salvation in the afterlife. It's important that we get this message out to people, but it's also important how we do it. And one of the problems in our time is that a lot of people, and especially a lot of young people in their zeal and enthusiasm, they become very rough, very harsh, and very vulgar in their presentation of the message of Islam. And in doing so, in doing so they end up chasing people away from Islam. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And in the story, at the very beginning, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Musa alayhi salam, informing him of his mission to do da'wah to Fir'aun, to the Pharaoh of Egypt, he commands him, وَقُولُ لَهُ قَوْلٍ لَيِّنْ Speak to him gently. Perhaps he may think, perhaps he may repent. And in this verse, we get one of the primary principles of da'wah. First look at the context of the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Musa alayhi salam, one of the greatest men to ever walk the face of this earth, who is about to go to the worst man to ever walk the face of this earth, the tyrant who claimed to be God, the Pharaoh of Egypt. And he is telling him that in this situation, when the best of mankind is speaking to the worst of mankind, speak to him gently. Speak to him gently. So there's no excuse. So that you know the message has reached him. And in this we get one of the primary principles of da'wah. That most of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, our da'wah must be done with gentleness. Yes, there is a time and a place for harshness. But that should not be the default. That should not be the norm. That should not be our personalities. That should be something that is reserved for extreme occasions when nothing else works. The norm in da'wah is gentleness. And we see this in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the way he presented Islam to his greatest enemies. In a way that softened their hearts and turned them into some of the greatest sahaba. When we look at the people who converted to Islam in the second half of the seerah, you see a very interesting trend. People like Suhail ibn Amr, Abu Sufyan, Khalid ibn Walid, Amr ibn al-As, Safwan ibn Umayyah, Ikrimah ibn Abi Jahal. What do all of these people have in common? They were all the enemies of Islam who fought the Prophet Sallallahu in the early battles. When you read about the battles of Badr and Uhud and Ahzab, you will hear these names on the enemy side. But for each of these names, when we talk about them today, we say, Radi Allahu Anhum. Why? Because despite the enmity that's caused through battles, the Prophet Sallallahu remained gentle in his da'wah to these individuals. And I want to mention two stories about two of these individuals that show us how gentle the Prophet ﷺ remained even with his bitterest enemies. We see this in the story of Suhail ibn Amr. Who is Suhail ibn Amr? Suhail ibn Amr was one of the leaders of the Quraysh. He was a spokesperson of the Quraysh. He was an individual who when the Prophet ﷺ used to walk around in Makkah calling people to Islam, he used to follow up and call those same people away from Islam. 
He was the one going around spreading propaganda against Islam. Telling people that Muhammad وسلم, is a poet and a magician. He was a very well-spoken person and he used that speech to call people away from Allah. His sons were great Sahaba. His sons were some of the most famous of the Sahaba. But he kept his sons as prisoners because they had accepted Islam. In the Battle of Badr, Suhail ibn Amr was captured. And his son, one of his sons actually went with him to Badr and crossed over and joined the Muslim side. And so Suhail is now in chains in, 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 in the Masjid of, of Nabawi. And his son is there looking at him. And just a few weeks before that, his son was in chains in his house and he was looking over him. And in this situation where Suhail, an enemy of Islam, who had spent his entire life preaching against Islam, fighting against Islam, causing propaganda against Islam, Umar Rajulanu has an idea. Umar Rajulanu says, let's take out his front teeth so he can't speak bad about Islam anymore. But we know in our religion, mutilation is not allowed. You're not allowed to do this to people. And that's early in our seerah. The laws of Islam were still being revealed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took this as an opportunity to correct Umar radiallahu anhu and guide him back towards the path of gentleness. And he made a very profound statement. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't do that because perhaps one day he will use that same speech to defend Islam. And so we see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being optimistic about the fate of someone who has dedicated his life to attacking Islam. We fast forward another nine years to the conquest of Makkah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his army of 10,000 enter Makkah and conquer it peacefully. And from amongst the people of Makkah is Suhail ibn Amr. And it is only then and there, after 20 years of fighting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as an old man, that Suhail finally takes his shahada. And he becomes a Sahabi. After the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that the wars of apostasy took place. So what happened was many of the tribes began to leave Islam. And in Makkah, people were discussing do we leave Islam or not. And Suhail ibn Amr, he gets up by the Kaaba and he delivers an eloquent speech. And the statement of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes true. That the same man who in his youth used his speech to attack Islam, now in his old age, he uses his speech to defend Islam. And Suhail gives a very eloquent speech in which he tells the people of Makkah, we were the last to accept Islam. Let's not be the first to leave Islam. And through his emotional khutbah, the people remain firm on their faith. And, and Makkah remains a Muslim land and it remains so until today. Suhail ibn Amr anhu then dedicates the rest of his life to jihad. And he dies in Syria from the great plague that took place during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. This is one example of a man who even though he was an enemy of Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu remained gentle towards him and this gentleness eventually led to his conversion and him becoming a great Sahabi. A second example is Khalid ibn Walid. And we all know who is Khalid ibn Walid, the sword of Allah. Khalid ibn Walid was not always the sword of Allah. In the beginning, he was the enemy of Islam. In fact, in the Battle of Uhud, the defeat of the Muslims was primarily because of Khalid ibn Walid. He led the cavalry, he led the army that attacked from the other side and caused the deaths of the Sahaba and caused the injury of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and caused all of this bloodshed. Now imagine this. Imagine today a man who is responsible for that much bloodshed amongst the Muslims. How many of us would be thinking he should become a Muslim? How many of us would think, you know, let's do da'wah to him, let's be gentle to him, let's talk nicely to him? Most of us would write that person off and we'd curse them and, and we'd publicly ridicule them. And we may not even want them to become Muslims because our hearts are not where it needs to be. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never lost sight of what was important. And that is the salvation of people from Jahannam by guiding them to Islam. And he continued to make sure that the message of Islam reached Khalid ibn Walid. Even though Khalid ibn Walid is in Makkah, 
He is in Medina. Those two territories are enemies to each other. But he keeps doing da'wah, slowly and subtly. And Khalid, Khalid ibn Walid's brother, Walid ibn Walid, was one of the Sahaba before him. And he goes to meet Khalid during the period where there was, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, there was a temporary spe- uh, peace between the Muslims. And during this temporary peace, a lot of the leaders of Makkah converted to Islam. And so during this period, Khalid ibn Walid learns from his brother Walid that the Prophet ﷺ keeps asking about him. What is the Prophet ﷺ asking about this man? Remember, at this point in time, this is the man responsible for killing Muslims. This is the man responsible for, for the Prophet ﷺ's own injuries. What is the Prophet ﷺ asking about Khalid? He's asking, where is Khalid? A man as intelligent as him should recognize that Islam is the truth by now. He's still praising the intelligence of his enemy and praising the sincerity of his enemy and hoping that his enemy would recognize the truth because of his intelligence and his sincerity. And eventually Khalid ibn Walid recognizes the truth. He makes the hijra to Medina, he converts to Islam and he becomes the sword of Allah, the undefeated sword of Allah who became responsible for the conquests of Syria and Iraq and many other lands that remain Muslim until today. Radiallahu anhu. And so from these two stories, the story of Suhail ibn Amr and the story of Khalid ibn Walid, we learn the importance